Nerdy Sports Fan here with the Wild Card Weekend Breakdown. Now, um, it was a fun one. It really was. The, the Colts and Texans, um, division rivalry, you always love to see those in Houston. Um, but Indy had already won there once before, and they proved to us that they, they could do it again pretty easily. Um, they got up by three scores early and pretty much just stayed that way the rest of the game. Um, their defense was fantastic. It's a little antiquated. You know, it's Tampa 2. Uh, they've been running that system forever now. Uh, there's no real zone blitzing involved in it. It's just effort. And that's it. Um, they have an extremely, extremely uh, fast group. And it worked out really well. Darius Leonard was all over the place as expected. And... Houston didn't have the personnel to really stretch them thin. You like to think that if they still had Will Fuller in the lineup, that would have stretched out the passing game better. Um, if the offensive line could keep the Colts away from Watson a little bit longer, maybe it would have been different. Um, but yeah, uh, the Colts' defense dominated from the beginning. Now in the second matchup, we had Seahawks going up against the Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys really dominated that game for most of the game defensively. Um, that X factor that you get from your coach and quarterback definitely happened at the end of the game, but it was just too little too late. Um, they got to within two points, and that's it. There just wasn't enough time for them to really get rolling once they had figured this Dallas defense out. It's not like back in the day when Peyton Manning would get down by uh, 20, 30 points and then something clicked just before halftime and all of a sudden he had the defense figured out and he would just knife through them in the second half and come back. It, you had that click, there just wasn't enough time. It didn't happen until the fourth quarter for Russell Wilson. So, um, better luck next year, Seattle. Um, after that, we have the early game today, Chargers against the Baltimore Ravens. Um, Similar situation, things finally clicked for Lamar Jackson at the end, but it was too little too late. Um, they came back, you know, within the last possession of the game. Um, Lamar Jackson's marching them down the field, and the rookie shows that he's a rookie. You know, he, he goes back to pass, and he's holding the ball a bit too low, a bit too liberal with it and a defensive lineman uh, knocks it out of his hands. And there was time left on the clock. They could have done something, but the Chargers defense stepped up at the end and uh, finally pushed them back. Um, Baltimore had the defense to hold the Chargers down in points. I mean, under 20 points for the Chargers is a big, big deal. Um, but their offense couldn't make up the difference like they had been able to do in so many games previously. Uh, relying on the runs fine, but you actually have to get the running game going. And the Chicago, uh, I'm sorry, the um, the Chargers made a big, big change by moving defensive secondary players into linebacking positions, giving them a lot more team defense speed, like we talked about with the Colts. Um, and that really just shut the running game down. They were flying all over the place and. Lamar Jackson, being young, couldn't make the necessary adjustments to take advantage of what was going on in the defensive secondary. Um, lastly, we have a heartbreaker in Chicago. God, um, Nagy going up against Peterson, two assistant coaches on the Chiefs staff moved on to greener pastures with head coaching jobs of their own. Something in the water down there in Kansas City, right? Um, and their team's going against one another. You have a very, very strong uh, defense on both sides that was proven this game. Uh, neither team scored over 20 again. And uh, it was still just up and down. It was back and forth. It was high energy all the way around. So it wasn't a boring game. It just wasn't high scoring. Um, came down to the end. Chicago had Philly exactly where they wanted them. They ran the clock down to only 10 seconds with a field goal unit running out there 
And just as the announcers are talking about the dude missing four field goals earlier in the year, he smacks another upright. I mean, they put magnets in these things? Obviously, that kicker just lost his job. Um, that can't be tolerated in big moments. I mean, a few during the season, sure, fine. But when the moment matters, we're within your range, you got to hit that. You just got to. You got to step up in the moment. Um, so obviously he's going to be moved along and another kicker is going to be there sometime tomorrow. Um, but their season's over. And Chicago had a defense seemingly of destiny this year. You were thinking of um, Baltimore Ravens, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, or uh more recently, Denver Broncos sort of performance where the defense flying around like animals out there just would be enough to bring them over the hump. But that's the way the football bounces. Um, Nick Foles doing just enough to get the Eagles over the hump yet again, winning against all odds yet again. Um, with this singular playoff game win following his Super Bowl run last season, I think there's a real conversation starting in Philadelphia whether or not Carson Wentz is even necessary. So, with a few injuries, you can lose your job. Just ask Drew Bledsoe when he went down and Tom Brady took his team to the Super Bowl. Ask Trent Green when he went down and Kurt Warner took his team to the Super Bowl. It's not to say he's a bad player. Just the other guys earned the right. So Philadelphia should be having that conversation and at this point it probably should go Nick Foles' way. Let me know what you guys think. I loved watching this weekend. It was... Really good football, different teams than in previous seasons. This is the parody that the NFL wants, and you can see why. They were great games to watch. Again, let me know what you think in the comments. Like and subscribe for further content.